Good morning. Uh, welcome to Nazarene Baptist Church here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm Pastor Kate Marshall Williams, Sr., and we're excited and delighted to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Certainly want to thank all of the members and friends of our fellowship for your prayerful and financial support of this ministry. I want you to continue to keep um, our nation in prayer and um, our sick and shut in in prayer a multiplicity of people not only in our church but across the land that are wrestling with physical infirmities uh, not just COVID-19 but um, losses of life and death and want to um, extend our sympathy to uh, the family of our um, dear brother, uh, the Matthews family, and we want you to know that we're praying for you um, this morning. Theodore Matthews passed. want him, his family, to know we're holding them up in prayer. So thank you, Lord, for this morning, for this time together, for this fellowship of the faithful. And Lord, we pray that as we preach this morning that you might be the preacher that we're here with an audience of one, and that's you. God, we confess our sin and ask that you'd cleanse our hearts, that you might be able to use us as a vessel, as a conduit to proclaim and explain your holy and unadulterated word. Thank you, Lord, for the scriptures. Thank you for your spirit. And thank you for your protection and love that never goes away. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Meet me in the book of the Psalter, uh, the poetical book of the Psalms, Psalm 34. And there's a word for us this morning, Psalm 34 in verse 17. And it reads thusly, the righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. I want to preach this morning from the subject healing help from the holy healing help, help for the hurting, healing help, help for the hopeless, healing help, help for the helpless. He says, the righteous cry and the Lord hears. Certainly, in this sin sick secular society we live in, there's a lot, a multiplicity of things to cry out to the Lord about. Job was right when he said, man born of a woman hath but a short time to live, and that is full of trouble. Everywhere you look, we got trouble in the land. Trouble in the land, trouble in the church, trouble in our homes, trouble in the community. And um, basically, it's because we live in a sin-cursed world. And when the world is cursed and it's sin-cursed, people, we will do wrong things. Even those of us that have been accepted in the beloved, the Bible says in James 3, 2, that in many things we stumble. I mean, salvation is the miracle of the moment, but the making of a saint takes a lifetime. And even so, uh, it can be perplexingly paradoxical to see what happened in living color. What Ecclesiastes 8, verse 14 says, there is vanity which is done upon the earth that there be just men on whom it happeneth according to the work of the wicked and there be wicked men to whom it happeneth according to the work of the righteous I said that this is vanity in other words um, 
We got bad things that happen to good people. And we got good things that happen to bad people. And it ha- if it hasn't happened to you yet, just keep on living. Now, uh, uh, many, many times in life, we don't really get what we deserve. And when it comes to salvation, we don't deserve salvation. We deserve death, hell, and the grave. But, but, and, and many times uh, we get frustrated and say, God, life is not fair. It's not fair that the righteous suffer innocently. That a 47-year-old woman would be trying to shield children or, and, or a school psychologist would rush toward the murderer to stop him and give up her life for children. It's, it's not fair. It's not fair that all over the world we witness mass murderers. It, it's not fair for people to be taken, uh, especially African Americans, to be taken in the millions from their homeland and as cattle and treated like uh, less than a human. It's, it's not fair to have cultic leaders lead um, people into suicides or children playing in their homes get killed, hit by a stray bullet or a man would leave a woman uh, to raise five children by herself. It's not fair. Or matter of fact, a woman might leave her husband to raise uh, some children by themselves. Life is filled with things that if we look at it in the natural, it's not fair. But you know what? Life is not fair. But there's one thing I know this morning. Help me, Holy Ghost, that God is fair. Hallelujah. And the psalmist says uh, that we that know him, uh, we that love him, uh, got an option. The text says uh, the righteous. Hallelujah. Those that walk with God, those that are right with God positionally because vertically because of the blood of Jesus. And those that are working it out, as Paul said to the Philippians, with fear and trembling horizontally so that our politic, what we preach and teach, well, get closer to our practicum, what we do. He said in verse 17, the righteous, what do they do? They cry. Life can get so rough uh, that all we can do is cry. Cry, matter of fact, uh, we can cry so much that the lacrimal gland don't even work now, not anymore. And we sing like the songwriter said, I cried my last tear yesterday. It says, the righteous cry, but thank God it doesn't stop right there. And the Lord hears. Some Jeremiah 33, 3, he said, call me and I will answer you, uh, and then I'll, and not only will I answer it, but I'll show you some things uh, that you couldn't see otherwise. Uh, I'll show you the inexplicable, great and mighty things uh, that you have no way of knowing. He says in the text, the righteous cry and the Lord hears. Not only does he hear, but he delivers. Uh, help me, Holy Ghost, out of all of uh, the trouble. That's why... We can comfort others who are driven to despair and exhort them to tell Jesus, to cry out to Jesus. Don't worry. Don't be anxious. Uh, don't be perplexed. Uh, the Bible said in Philippians 4, 6, be anxious for nothing, not a thing, uh, but in everything. He gives you an option. He gives you a solution to your stress. He gives you an antidote to your anxiety. He said, be anxious for nothing, but but in everything, uh, pray, call out to me, cry out to me. And if you do that, verse 7 says, uh, uh, the peace uh, 
uh, uh, the God of peace that gives the peace of God uh, only through our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, she'll guard, I uh, shall garrison, she'll keep our mind. Uh, think about it, beloved. The only reason why we're not crazy is because the Lord keeps our mind. Help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, he said he'll keep our minds, he'll guard our minds, uh, he'll save uh, and share, save our broken hearts uh, and give us hope valley of despair uh, I'm going to have a witness this morning uh, so we can reach out especially those that, that have no God on their side uh, that have no peace and confusion that have no robe of righteousness on their back uh, we can reach out to those that have no heaven in their view uh, no hell to shun uh, and let them know that Jesus saves uh, to the utmost Jesus saves hallelujah so we can uh, experience his comfort because he said no weapon formed against us will prosper Isaiah 54 17 every tongue that rises up and against us in judgment God will condemn this is the inheritance of the Lord's servant so he says uh, nothing can separate you child of God nothing can no matter what anybody says uh, no matter what anybody does uh, no devil uh, uh, no demon, uh, no doubt, uh, no dismay, no discouragement, uh, uh, no dilemma. Nothing can separate you. Uh, nothing, help me, Holy Ghost, can separate me uh, from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So how can we experience his comfort when we are broken? How can we experience this? His healing help when we are hurting, uh, anybody hurting this morning, when we are hopeless uh, and we, we are helpless, first of all, we got to realize uh, that the Lord is with us. When we're hurting, especially, we forget many times where God is. Uh, he hasn't gone anywhere. He, he, we think he's uh, distant and he doesn't care about what we think and how we feel. Matter of fact, he already knows uh, what we're thinking and feeling before we think it and feel it. Because he's the omniscient God. Uh, he knows all and he sees all. Uh, and he's right there. He's omnipresent. Uh, help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, every bit of him, all of him is everywhere simultaneously at the same time. That's why he said, cry to me, I hear you. I heard you. Isaiah 65, 24, even before you said it, I heard you. I knew what you were going to say before you said it. What kind of God we is that? What a mighty God we serve. That's why the angels bow before him. That's why heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. He knows what I'm thinking even before I think it. Hallelujah. Verse 18 says, uh, He's close. Psalm 34, 18, he's nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. He says, I'm close to those uh, that have a broken heart. And he says, I save those of a contrite spirit. I save those who are crushed in spirit. There are things that can happen to us in this life that really just crush our spirit. And the Bible says God is with us in our pain. Uh, he, the Prince of Peace is there in the midst of our pain. Uh, the Christ of glory is there when we're crushed in spirit. Uh, the Nazarite is nigh unto us uh, when our hearts are broken uh, because he promised. Uh, anybody know he promised? Uh, he promised never to leave us, uh, never to leave us alone. Uh, he said, Hebrews 13, 5, I'll never fail you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. Three things this morning that we need to remember when you're broken, when you're crushed in spirit, when you're helpless, hopeless, and hurting, and need help from the holy, not from the human. That's the problem. We look for help from the human in the horizontal when the help is in the vertical from the holy. 
the human can't help you unless they go to the holy. So cut out the middleman and go straight to the holy. He says, uh, the first thing I want you to know of, about the awareness of God, that God is aware. He knows what you're going through. Uh, he doesn't only gnosko, he epigonosko. He knows because he's experienced himself through the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that's why he gave up his home in glory, that we might have a redemption story. That's why he wrapped himself up in the human flesh uh, and tabernacled among us uh, and became a man. Am I right about 100% man and 100% God uh, that he could feel what we feel, uh, that he could know what we know uh, in, in, in every aspect of life. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Job 13, 27 says, you God, uh, Keep close watch over all my paths. Uh, let that sink in for a moment. Uh, that no matter where we go, uh, God is watching over us. Uh, beloved, God is watching over you. Uh, and God is watching over me. Uh, nothing escapes his watchful eye. Uh, and very tears, uh, every teardrop uh, that we ever cry is numbered. Uh, matter of fact, the Bible said he numbers our tears. Uh, I want to be able to witness this morning but you say nobody knows uh, the trouble I've seen uh, nobody knows uh, my sorrow no nobody knows uh, nobody but Jesus uh, say yeah uh, you say nobody knows what I'm going through uh, well the Bible said not one sparrow uh, falls to the ground uh, that he doesn't know about it uh, he says uh, the, I know the very number of hairs on your head uh, I just want you to know this this morning uh, realize uh, that he is aware not only is he aware but he's attentive he cares not only does he know comprehensively but he cares he's attentive now they whom one seven says the Lord is good He's a refuge when, just when I need him most, in the time of trouble, when I can't take anymore, he's right there. He's attentive. He knows. He cares for those, uh, the Bible says, that trust him. He said, when you feel like that, don't trust your feelings. Uh, help me, Holy Ghost. Don't trust what I feel because feelings vacillate. Uh, they're up and down. They, they change like the wind. Uh, one moment I feel one way, another moment I feel another way. He said, trust me. Not your mental muscle. Trust me. Not what you feel. Trust the Father in me. Not what you feel. Why? Because Hebrews 4.15 says he's a sympathetic high priest. He's a sympathetic savior. He's an empathetic, uh, Elo he's empathetic Elohim. Uh, in other words, your pain may not matter to other folks, uh, it, but it may not matter to, to those that are around you, uh, but your pain matters to God. Uh, that's why he said in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, throw all your anxiety, throw all your cares uh, upon me why because I care for you how do I care for you well, Hebrews 7 25 that's why I'm always praying for you I'm always making intercession for you uh, I'm always pleading your case uh, I'm always calling your name out to daddy that you might stand in the victory hallelujah so beloved you can talk to him about your hurt talk to him about your lack of hope. Huh? Matter of fact, the songwriter put it this way. Have a little talk with Jesus. Uh, tell him all about your troubles. Uh, uh, he'll hear your faintest cry. Uh, the songwriter said he'll answer by and by. Uh, hear a little prayer wheel turn and know that the fire is burning. Have a little talk with Jesus. Uh, why? Because he'll make it right. I'm going to have a witness this morning. God wants uh, to help us out. Uh, he desires to help you out. Uh, to help me out. He said, but, but that's why Hebrews 4.16 says, but you got to approach God uh, 
with confidence, with the blessed assurance. Why? So that we can receive mercy. And that mercy doesn't stop. It flows to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. It's enduring mercy. And fine praise. God's riches at Christ's expense. And what will mercy and grace do? They'll prop you up on the either side. And they'll help us. Right when in a time of need, God is not only aware, but he gives his assistance. He not only cares about your hurt, but he wants to help us, help you, help me with our hurt. You see, some of us grow in through our pain. Hallelujah. Some of us get stuck in our pain. And some of us go on through their hurt and get stuck in the hurt and never get past it. Why? Glad you asked. Because the scripture says we don't call upon him. We don't cry out to him because he is uh, our deliverance. Beloved, but know that he's aware of what you're going through. He cares about what you're going through. And he's attentive to what you're going through. And he offers his assistance. He doesn't force it on us. He offers it to us. But we got to realize that, number one, the Lord is with us. And, and then we got to release the hurt to the Lord. Realize he's with us. He's right there, ready to help, willing to help. But we got to release it to him. Cast your burden. Psalm 55, 22, upon the Lord, and he will sustain you. He'll give you sustaining power, sust sustenance uh, that we've never dreamed of uh, is available to us uh, from Almighty God. In other words, he said, release it, let it go. How? Stop focusing on what's lost uh, and, and start focusing on what's left. Uh, stop focusing on what's gone uh, and focus on, start focus on what's gained. Uh, Isaiah 43, 18 says, uh, he told Israel, don't dwell, don't tabernacle, don't remember the former things. Uh, don't dwell on the past. Help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, pay no attention to the things of old. Uh, why? Because I'm doing a new thing. Uh, and uh, even that now, uh, that new thing's going to spring forth. Uh, it's going to come up out of you. Uh, God says the past is the past. Uh, so we got to let it go. Uh, it can hurt you. It can't hurt you anymore. Uh, some of us let our past uh, continue to hurt us day in and day out. It can't hurt us unless we let it hurt us. Help me, Holy Ghost. It's a choice that you have and that I have. So I realize God is with us and let us release the past. Am I right about it? Say yeah. Here are our options, beloved. Here's what we do. We can uh, we can re repress the hurt. Uh, we can hurt it, hold it in. Uh, we can push it down. Uh, we can swallow it. Uh, we can say, I'm taking it. Uh, if you swallow it, feelings in your stomach will score, will keep score. Uh, if we swallow it, uh, if we pretend it doesn't exist uh, and hold it in, uh, our health will be at stake. Uh, it'll turn into an awesome. Uh, it'll become unhealthy. Uh, I meet walking wounded uh, all the time uh, because they've never let go of the hurt. Uh, can't do anything about it. Uh, it's in the past. Uh, they keep repressing it. Uh, and then some folk just rehearse it. Uh, they go over their mind over and over and over again. Uh, and it literally tortures us uh, by thinking about it over and over again. Uh, because the more I think about my hurt, uh, the mad I get. Uh, and the madder I get, uh, the more depressed I get and the more depressed I get I start feeling hopeless and helpless and feel like I want to strike back 
say yes. God says don't dwell on the past. Don't dwell on your hurts. Don't let it consume your thoughts. Keep your mind stayed on me. And I'll keep you in perfect peace. I wonder if I got a witness this morning. But you know what, beloved? There's a difference between moaning and mourning. Because some things hurt so bad. We moan about it. Or we can mourn about it. Mourning is legitimate grief. Because Matthew 5, 4 said, Blessed, divine favor, help me, Holy Ghost, is upon them that mourn over their sin. And they shall be comforted. The great comforter will comfort you. God wants to comfort you in your grief, in your legitimate grief, in your legitimate heartache. But don't moan. You can mourn, but don't moan. Help me, Holy Ghost. Moaning is complaining. Oh, me, oh, my. You want to keep hold on it. You keep rehearsing it. Then you have a pity party and invite mom, pa, pity over and then take out what you feel on the inside on everybody else on the outside uh, but God says don't repress it uh, don't rehearse it uh, and, and don't resent it uh, because when somebody has hurt us uh, when somebody has done us wrong uh, we fantasize uh, as a matter of fact we schedule uh, as James Brown used to say back in the day uh, the big payback uh, the big payback uh, resentment will eat you up It'll kill you on the inside. It's like cancer. It eats you alive. It'll destroy you. Now you have a choice. You can repress the hurt. You can rehearse the hurt. You can resent the hurt. Or you can do what the Redeemer says. You can release the hurt. And when you release it, release your hurt to the holy. Release all of your mess to the master say yeah I don't know how you feel about it but every day every moment of every day we're challenged to rehearse it to resent it to repress it but thank God almighty by the power of the Holy Ghost we can release it we can let it go to the Lord Hallelujah. What does this mean, beloved? Romans 12, 19 says, Never avenge yourself. Leave it to God. Matter of fact, whatever hurt you, whoever hurt you, whoever hurt me, God is saying, leave room for my wrath. Leave room for divine retribution. I will repay those who deserve it. The Bible says in Galatians 6, 8, I, I won't be mocked. You're not going to be able to thumb your nose up at me. Whatever man sows, that shall he also reap. So he says, let go of your hurt. Let God settle the score. If somebody hurts you, don't hate on them. He said, he'll make your enemies your footstool. So Lord, keep the haters coming because I want to I wanna be elevated in you. He says, let God handle it. He said, Proverbs 3, 5, don't lean on your own understanding. My own understanding gets me in trouble. Matter of fact, who else could do a better job getting even than God? Romans 12, 21, he said, don't be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Overcome evil with good. Bless them that hurt you. Uh, pray for them that use you. Love them. That take advantage of you. That your father in heaven, he knows how to set the record straight. The hurts that hurt the most are those that are out of your control. Many times the things that hurt us, we can't do a thing about it. We can't control another person's deportment. Someone did something to us that we couldn't control and they hurt us and it's out of our control. But it's not out of God's control. Give it to the Lord. Never forget that God is aware of everything 
that anybody does to you uh, and anybody does to me. Hebrews 4.13, uh, he says, no creature is hidden uh, from his sight. Uh, everything is laid, made manifest to him. It's laid bare to him. And God keeps score. Uh, he keeps a record. Uh, in Psalm 10, it's, it's the victim psalm. You see them out there hurting people, bowling them over arrogantly. They're helpless. Uh, they say, can do what they want to do and get away with it. That's what they say. Psalm 10 talks about it. Verse 14, but the Lord sees the hurt. Uh, he sees the grief. Uh, he sees the wicked. Uh, and, and he sees the pain that they cause. Uh, and he says, uh, and he'll call it that. Uh, he says, uh, uh, we say there's no accountability. Yeah, there's accountability. There's, Calibrated to God, and God will judge and avenge the helpless and the victimless. The victim, leave it in the Lord's hands. Let God be God. Somebody say, He'll fight your battles. He can do a better job fighting our battles. That's why Paul said, Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. That's why he said, When you get up in the morning, Get dressed for battle. Get your helmet on, your helmet of salvation. Get your shield of faith. Get your sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Gird up your loins with truth so that you can deal with the anger on the inside. You know what, beloved? When somebody hurts me, when somebody hurts you, we get angry. Their anger is a God-given emotion. The Bible in Ephesians 4 26 we can be angry but don't sin uh, how do I deal with the anger on the inside uh, when I lose something uh, or somebody takes something away from me uh, and I'm angry at that person uh, that took it away from me uh, help me Holy Ghost what do I do uh, he said you got to channel that anger into something constructive uh, you got to channel that right indignation you got to channel those feelings that make you want to get them back you got to channel it into something constructive you got to use that energy to be a blessing to somebody else like man like mothers against drunk diving those mothers got the gift they were angry with a cause there was a legitimate anger there that somebody killed their loved one a drunk driver they channeled that anger to reduce the number of drunk drivers on the road. Oh, my brothers and sisters, when you're hurting, when you're mourning, when you're in grief, take that and turn it around and be a blessing to somebody else that's hurting. Be a blessing to somebody else that's mourning. Be a blessing to somebody else that's grieving. Because I don't know about you, when I get in a pity party and I take my pity party and put it aside and help somebody else I find out that my problem wasn't big at all compared to what somebody else is going through realize that the Lord is with you release it to him for the Bible said he's near to you he's never more near than when your heart is broken He's close to the broken hearted when you're hurting, when you're mourning. God has never been closer to you. So realize that he is aware. Realize that he's attentive. It may look like he's not doing anything now, but God knows. And I'm so glad he knows. Am I right about it? Realize he's aware. Recognize he cares that he's attentive and he's ready. He stands the tiptoe anticipation uh, to assist you uh, so give your heart uh, give your hurt uh, give it over uh, 
turn it over to Jesus. Am I right about it? Back in the day, I had a deacon. His name was Deacon Otis Bram. He was blind, but that boy could deep sing, and he would sing that song, turn it over to Jesus, because he will. I wonder if you know he will. He can. He'll work it out. Say yeah. Don't dwell in the past. You a new creature. Old things have passed away. Old things have become new. Philippians 3.14. Forget those things behind and press on toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Don't resent it. You don't want a root of bitterness to get in your heart. Don't rehearse it. Don't repress it. Be honest with yourself. I got to be honest with myself about what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling and then take that and release it to the Lord. Let him have it. Am I right about it? Because we realize that every moment of every day that the Lord is with us and that we can release it to him and then rely for the scripture said trust in the Lord with all our heart with our mind will and emotions our intellect our feelings our thoughts and lean not to our own understanding but everything we got acknowledge him and he'll direct our paths so realize he's with us release it to him and rely on his resources well what does he have he got the scripture the scripture says it'll help us it's one of three comforters that will help us he says it's a lamp under my feet Psalm 119 105 and it's a light under my pathway Psalm 119 25 when my life is down in the dumps matter of fact I'm down in the dirt no down in the dust uh, end of despondency I am completely discouraged uh, he says in Psalm 119 25 uh, give my life give your life uh, uh, through the word uh, I'll give you life uh, I'll revive you uh, through the word of God uh, and I tell you uh, that greater is he that's in you uh, than he that's in the world uh, that'll revive you uh, when I tell you that there's no condemnation uh, to them that are in Christ Jesus uh, that ought to revive you uh, when I say man can't live uh, by bread alone uh, but by every word uh, that proceeds out of the mouth of God that ought to revive you the psalmist said your word because your word has been my comfort say yes somebody in your Bible study go to your concordance and highlight all the verses in the psalm that have to do with comfort study the great comforter in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3 and 4 not only do we study the scripture because the scripture says it's God breathed huh? and it's profitable. You can get gain from it huh? for doctrine, for right living. Huh? It'll show you where you're wrong. Huh? And the scripture will help us get right huh? if we heed it. Huh? He said, don't only study the scripture, it, his resources, huh? but seek the saints. Huh? Because we need each other. None of us is an island. We can't do this thing alone. There's no solo saints. There's no wrong range of Christians. We need each other. We are family. We are the body of Christ. Members in particular. Hebrews 10, 24, we are to provoke one another to love and good works. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 26. We ought to have the same care for one another. His resources are in the scripture. His resources are in other saints. But there's some things that other saints can't do. So he says, my resources is be saturated with my spirit. In other words, be filled be with my spirit. And the Greek implied be continuously filled with my spirit. 
spirit somebody ought to pray and praise them this morning I'm, because I'm not going to leave here comfortless I, I got another comfort time, and he's going to come in you when you get saved say yeah and dwell in you Romans 15 13 the God of hope he'll fill you with joy anybody know what I'm talking about when there's nothing to be happy about and you're laughing when there's nothing sad but but nothing to make you sad but you're rejoicing in the power of he'll pour out his spirit over you and you look at your hands and your hands will look new you look at your feet and your feet will too your whole life your whole outlook on life will be different that's somebody to hope in he's the Holy Ghost that's in you he is the hope of glory I don't know about you beloved but in my 42 years a pastoral ministry I've seen a lot of grief I've seen a lot of suffering I've seen a lot of physical pain I've seen a lot of parental pain I've seen a lot of marital pain I've seen a lot of emotional pain and I've experienced all of that say yeah but I just stopped by this morning on my way to heaven to let you know that there's healing health for the holy that this light affliction what we are going through down here is on the job is working a greater work in heaven amen somebody so that one day revelation 21 says uh, there'll be no more pain uh, hallelujah one day uh, there'll be no more sorrow uh, hallelujah one day uh, there'll be no more grief uh, no more graveside service uh, no more anger uh, no more resentment uh, no more victims uh, no more tragedy uh, thank you Lord uh, I thank him uh, because soon uh, and very soon uh, we gonna see the king uh, do you know who he is uh, he's grace for the guilty uh, thank you Jesus uh, he's peace when I'm perplexed uh, thank you Jesus uh, he's mercy when I'm miserable uh, thank you Jesus uh, he's my coming to give me the midnight hour uh, thank you Jesus uh, he turns my midnight sorrow uh, into daytime rejoicing Rejoicing. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, he's my doctor uh, in a sick room. Uh, he's my lawyer uh, that pleads my case uh, in a courtroom. Uh, he's my bridge uh, when my waters are troubled. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, I don't know how you feel about it, uh, but I can't wait. Uh, I can't wait uh, to hear the trumpet sound. Uh, I can't wait. Uh, to see him press his way through the clouds I can't wait for him to say I'm back come on up come on up to meet me in the air say yeah cause when we all I hope it's everybody get to heaven what a day oh what a day of rejoicing you think you're rejoicing down here but what a day of rejoicing that will be why when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout victory victory all the victory thank you Lord praise your holy name praise your holy name Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That you are help for the hurting, the hopeless, and the helpless. But Lord, you tell us to cry out, and you'll hear, and you'll deliver. 
not out of some things, but out of everything that we go through. Thank you, Lord. For Lord, you said uh, you're close to those whose hearts are broken. And you save the spirit that's crushed. You heal. God, we pray, no matter what the cause of the discouragement, the hopelessness, the hurt, the helplessness, we pray this morning. From the pulpit to the door, from the ceiling to the floor, we cry out to you that you touch and make whole. Maybe you're here this morning. You're viewing in Philadelphia, in the suburbs, across the nation, all over the world. You're hurting. You feel hopeless and helpless. The Holy has something for you. He heals. Psalm 147.3, the brokenhearted. And he binds up the wounds. Heal. Show up God in our lives. Heal our hurts and woundedness. That we won't be tempted that we won't live out our hurt in hurting other people. Thank you, God. For you told us this morning there is healing help for the hurting from the holy. What must I do, preacher? You don't know him? You can get to know him this morning. He died for you. While you were yet sinners, Romans 5, 8 says, because Romans 3, 23 says, all have sinned, all have fallen short, come short of the glory of God. He said, while you were yet sinners, I died for you. I stood in your place, received the gift. For whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. When you ask him to come in, he'll come in and sup with you and dine with you and take up residence in you in the person of the Holy Spirit to help you to be the boy, the girl, the man, the woman that God has called us to be. If you're here, you're listening, you, I need Jesus, or I'm saved and I, I need uh, to cry out to him like I've never cried out to him before and believe that he hears and believe that he will answer in his time that if I'm in a waiting pattern I ask the Lord the question what are you trying to teach me most of the time is to trust him Lean not to my own understanding. But in all my ways, all my mind, all my will, all my emotion, surrender to him. Help us, Lord, to surrender our mind, will, and emotion to you every moment of every day. Then and only then, You'll direct our paths. You'll make the crooked road straight. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us this morning, and we trust that you were challenged and encouraged in the things of God, and that healing help from the holy is available every moment of every day Help us, Lord, to take advantage of your provision for your people. We're here for you. Uh, our website, www.nazarenebc.org. We have a 
some helps that help you grow in Christ, help you to know Christ and know that you're secure in him. And all of our midweek moments of meditation and Sunday messages are, are listed there. Thank you for joining us today. Share this uh, with your friends, your family, your foes. They might be encouraged to know that there's um, help, holy help for those that are hurting. Father, thank you for today and thank you for the privilege of proclaiming and explaining your holy and unadulterated word. Thank you, God, that when we call, you answer. You hear us and you deliver. Lord, help us to wait on your deliverance and to learn while we're waiting what you want to teach us. Basically, how to trust you. God, we pray for those that are sick and afflicted, struggling with COVID-19 and other physical infirmities and those that are suffering headaches and heartaches. We lay them at the foot of the holy today. Thank you, Lord. Bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. God bless you.